You're not in a data job yet, but you know you can be. Maybe you started learning Excel, SQL, and maybe you've started solving problems with data, even if it's not inside your job title. And that's exactly where I started too. I went from working as a temp data entry worker to getting promoted multiple times, eventually landing the data analyst position at that same company. Early in my career, I didn't pitch that promotion or that career track. I earned it by solving real problems, automating manual work, and becoming too useful to ignore. But since then, I've been promoted from business analyst to a senior role to a consultant role. And then now again, I'm intentionally pitching my next role, a transition to becoming a data scientist in my company. Now I want to show you exactly how I'm doing it so you can use this exact playbook to pitch your way into becoming a data analyst from wherever you're starting. Hi, I'm Jeff and I became a data analyst over 13 years ago, work my way up to a business analyst consultant where I am today at a Fortune 5 company. And the job market is tough right now, so I'm on a mission to help 10,000 people break into data analytics, and I want you to be one of them. So if you're serious about breaking into the field, hit that subscribe button because I'm going to help you every step of the way. Currently, I work in healthcare operations, kind of like a one-man dev shop on the business side. So think of me like a blend of a developer, an analyst, and an internal consultant. I meet with stakeholders, identify manual and inefficient workflows and processes, then build lightweight custom tools, mostly in Excel, Access, VBA, and SQL, and then automate them. Basically, I build internal apps and automation for problems that aren't big enough or budget-friendly enough, which is like the biggest reason for using the formal IT development pipeline. So think of it like shadow IT, but it's done cleanly, bridging the gap between the business needs and tech execution at a very low cost. So now that I've started to learn Python, diving into improving my SQL skills and AI and machine learning, I'm now strategically positioning myself to become the go-to data scientist for my department. And now I'm documenting every step of the way. Here are the steps of how I'm building towards becoming a data scientist, getting the role, and how you can also pivot into a data analytics role by using the same steps and framework. This isn't the first time I've grown into a new role internally. When I first moved from a business analyst to a senior BA, then eventually promoted again to a business analyst consultant, each step happened because I stated my goal, I tracked what I was learning, and then delivered value and impact that aligned with what my team needed and what upper management was looking at. But this time I'm taking an even bigger leap and I've become a lot more intentional. Now I'm positioning myself to become that go-to data scientist and I want to show you how I'm going to plan that and transition so you can use this exact framework to make this step and process easier for you so you can land and break into data analytics in your current role. Step one, get clear on the role that you want. I'm not here to just chase a job title. I want to become the person for our team who builds AI and ML powered tools that solve real world business problems. From advanced automation to predictive analytics and modeling, if you're trying to become a data analyst, this your version might be similar to this cleaning, analyzing messy reports, automating manual tracking processes, visualizing trends for decision makers and upper management. So here's an action step for you. Write down what that looks like in your company for you. What type of tools would make you stand out? What types of pain points could you solve with better data skills? So step two is build a targeted learning path. So instead of trying to learn everything at once, what I did was build an intentional roadmap that focused only on the skills that I actually use and would actually be helpful to our team. So here's what I'm prioritizing. First is going to be Python. This is so I can rebuild the things that I used to automate in VBA and because Python is more powerful and a lot of companies use Python, so I have upwards trajectory plus flexibility to go to other companies if I wanted to. Two is SQL. I need to grow stronger in SQL querying, automations, especially for a lot more complex validations for where I want to head. So I need to get to an advanced proficiency. Three is going to be Excel. So even though I'm at a very advanced proficiency, I want to quickly cover some new and modern features because I learned Excel very long time ago. But 
there are some new features that I just don't, I'm not aware of, and I just do it the old way. Things like Python and Excel, uh, better dynamic arrays, and other things like query, DAX, those things, I just wanna cover the gaps of my knowledge so that I can be better. Four is Power BI. Even though we don't really use Power BI, and it's gonna be more about delivering reports fast because Excel, people just use some of these reports and then ingest it into their various tools. So it's nice seeing some dashboards for the metrics, but being able to analyze things faster and then put it into the various tools or whatever processes that they're ingesting works better for the team and the different people I'm delivering things to. So the reason why I'm learning Power BI is for dashboarding and data visualizations because we work in a Microsoft environment and so that it's easier for upper management to see some of the reports. But in reality, the Excel is good enough. I'm just doing this more for having the skill set and then just to build cool portfolio pieces. And then finally is five AW AI certifications. I'm studying Amazon Web Services or AWS AI certifications to understand AI infrastructure, how it's built, how it's deployed in real world cloud environments. My goal is to eventually freelance and build AI powered applications and be able to have that as a side hustle. So AWS is the perfect choice for me because it's widely adopted by startups and it's often used because it's a lot more cost effective than the alternatives like Azure, especially for early stage projects. So this rounds out my also my skill set. So I also have flexibility, which is something that I like. Now you might be thinking, why do AWS when my work uses Microsoft? So that's a great question. Right now, I don't work directly with Azure indirectly. But since we're inside a Microsoft heavy environment, I expect to just get that exposure through future projects. So rather than getting certified in something that I'm naturally going to pick up and get work experience for, that's why I decided to study AWS instead. Plus a friend was already working on the certification and it's easier to study with a friend. AWS is still the most widely used cloud provider, especially by startups and tech companies. And a lot of my friends in tech are already working with AWS. So learning it again gives me flexibility to freelance, build AI powered side projects, or even pivot into a startup or tech role if I want to later. I like the flexibility. So this is why I'm learning. Plus it's interesting. And it's not just about collecting certifications, it's understanding AI and also how it's being applied currently in a real world environment from something that I'm just not used to. Plus, these certifications give you credibility inside your job interviews, especially if you're going to a job interview that requires AWS. So they're hands-on, they align perfectly with the kinds of tools that I wanna build on the side. Plus it gives me flexibility, which is the biggest reason. The key here though is making sure that you stay relevant. And I'm focusing on what helps me ship actual tools, not just passively learning courses, but what gives me again, flexibility in the future. So here's an action step for you. Don't just learn when you're going through all of these courses and learning these YouTube tutorials. Learn with a goal. Choose one to two tools that you can actually work, use at work now. Excel formulas, SQL queries, Power BI dashboards, Tableau dashboards. Build around the problems you've seen, not just brand tutorials. So as you learn, you can apply it directly to the data and the problems that you see at work. Step three is plan your first win even if you haven't built it yet. What a lot of people like to do is learn everything first, then they look for a problem to solve. What I'm doing is the opposite. I start to identify real world business problems that were wasting time, money, causing inefficiency or just headache. And then what I used was ChatGPT to reverse engineer the problem and the gaps in my skill set. I asked, what do I need to know to pull this off? I'm heading to become a business scientist. What can I build now? And what's the fastest way to get there? But here's the twist, I hit a wall. With AI and ML internally deploying actual LLMs or AI models requires going through this high cost compliance framework. In other words, it's expensive and like super expensive. Even though I could deploy these models through AWS Bedrock or similar low cost methods, I can't actually use it at work without inner 
without the fancy enterprise infrastructure and approvals. So it's a lot of governance and red tape. So right now I'm trying to figure out creative ways to still use AI and ML for certain components to get wins inside those constraints. And that's where the opportunity lives. Because if I can solve it here, I can go back into my niche of building low cost tools, but now enhanced by AI and ML. So here's an action step for you. If you're working in a constrained environment, limited tools, messy data, strict policies, focus on building within those boundaries. Great analysts don't need perfect conditions to deliver impact. Start by solving small repetitive problems with what you already know and what you have access to. Could be Excel, SQL, Power BI, or even Access. Build something useful, a tracker, validation check, a simple dashboard, and then improve it over time. Don't think of constraints as blockers, but think about them as the reason your skills matter. The more resourceful you are, the faster you're gonna get noticed. And then step four, communicate your goal early, but pitch the role later. So I used to wonder, do I pitch the transition now, or do I wait until I finish certifications and build a finished tool. So here's what I landed on and it's been working and it's already working. So instead of saying I want to be a data scientist, which you could lead with and I've done that in the past, I started out with a question and here's the general gist. I've been thinking about how I want to grow and contribute more at a higher level. Are there any areas you think would be valuable for me to learn or dive into that could help our department improved? So what that did was it opened the door for deeper conversations. And then I learned about initiatives that leadership already had exploring AI and ML. So that kept the conversation open and going and not by announcing everything that I was studying, but just by asking smart questions and then showing curiosity in meetings. I didn't have to say that I'm learning Python or approving at SQL out loud. I just kept learning things in the background and letting my questions and my work reflect my growth. And then that eventually led me to being added to an internal AI and automation project. And now this transition is being built naturally into my career path. My manager already sees where I'm heading and the foundation is already being laid out. So an action step is if you're aiming for the data analyst role or just an analyst role with data that's data heavy, try the same approach. Start by asking how you can help the team and what skills you need to focus on. Be engaged in meetings, learn in the background, and then let your growth show subtly at first. You don't have to force the pitch. You just have to start showing them that it makes sense for your transition later. You're planting the seeds now for them to grow in the future. And then step five is making the pitch once you have traction. So once you have some traction, the next step is to pitch your growth and not by demanding a new role, but instead inviting collaboration and conversation. So here's how I'm going to pitch and here's how you can do it too and get some inspiration from it. When the time is right, what I plan to say to my boss, and here's the general idea that I'm going to naturally split into a conversation. This is things I think through my head of main points I want to cover going into like a 101. This is the first time in a while that I felt genuinely excited about improving my skill set. I've been learning more about AI, automation, ML, and started to think about whether it's possible to grow into a data science role within our department. I really enjoy working with our team and I don't want to leave, but I also want to keep striving for a higher career path if that's realistic. I just want to get your thoughts and your feedback to see if that's something we could work towards and what it would take for me to get there. On the, one of the things I want to say is this is completely real and it's not just about saying the right thing. It's about saying that something that I've actually been feeling. And when you have this type of conversation, you want to adjust it to reflect your own thoughts and emotions at the time. So it's easier to convey those emotions because the more honest and personal that you are, the more likely your managers to understand where you're coming from and want to support you. So this works because it's honest, it's human, it shows your loyalty, your ambition, but it also isn't a threat or an ultimatum. It invites collaboration, not permission. So then you can get the conversation moving forward in that direction. And it also fits within your company career goals and the development process that they already have in place. Now, one of the questions that I get is what happens if you don't have the support? Not every company has a helpful career path. Not every boss is thinking about your next step, but you still can create momentum. And here's how. 
build anyways. Start in Excel, SQL, Power BI, access whatever you have access to. Make sure you track your impact, time saved, errors reduced, manual work eliminated, revenue generated, costs saved. Share when relevant. If your tool saves someone time, catches an error, mention it in context when appropriate. Like during a meeting, in a project update, or when helping a teammate, or your manager. It's not about bragging, it's about making your work visible by being helpful. And then finally, it's just become more visible. Not out loud, but just undeniably useful that they can't ignore you. Volunteer for high visibility projects where upward management will see your impact. And that's exactly how I got recognized for being promoted to a senior analyst and then a consultant. And that's how I'm building my case for becoming a data scientist in my next transition. So use all of what I shared so that you can become a data analyst because the processes and the steps are the same. Now you might be thinking that sounds great and all, but what if there's no data analyst role in my department or I've tried and no one is biting. So that's exactly Exactly what I cover and break down in my next video. Can't land a data analyst job? Try these 17 alternative roles instead. These are going to be data adjacent roles that you could pivot into even if you don't have the anal analyst title yet. So you can build experience, grow your portfolio, and land better roles later faster. So watch that next.